Welcome to this uh, VHF UHF channel and uh, interesting question that I received uh, in the weekend uh, from a viewer that is asking what are the frequencies of the space probes that NASA has sent out and is it possible for regular um, you know small station like we have some most of us to receive these signals so here's the thing um, and one of the reasons that question came through is because you read the article about the uh, British Columbia amateur radio operator that was able to receive um, a signal from one of the space probes around the planet Mars. So you thought, well, if an amateur radio operator can do it, it is it that difficult? It is actually, in fact, extremely difficult. That amateur operator specializes in actually receiving signals from spacecrafts and or orbiting satellites. He has his own um, home-built system with uh, a satellite dish. It requires to have some extremely quiet and very sensitive equipment, low noise amplifiers, and of course, a dish of a certain size. The bigger the dish, the more signal you can gather, the more the chances are you'll get something. But it's extremely, extremely difficult. And for most of us, you know, like me and my setup here with just a vertical antenna, forget it, uh, apart from lower orbit satellites, you're not getting that much more. Um, the other question that arises there is, what are the frequencies? Well, most of those communications are out of reach also of most equipment. So not a lot of people have capable receivers that can go up into 10 or 20 gigahertz in frequency. A lot of the space probes that uh, NASA communicates with are in very high gigahertz range. So that's also very, very difficult to tune due to the high frequencies that are much higher than most receiving equipment is capable of. So that's also another uh, thing. He says that he tried to find a list of space probes and their uh, nominal frequencies. This is something that is kept pretty secret by NASA in general. They'll give you a, a range, but they're not going to give you a specific frequency, for example. And probably because of uh, the fear of maybe having interference or, or you know, I don't know, it's you know security reasons, I would guess. Uh, one of the things that they they do is keep those frequencies pretty secret and pretty quiet in general. I'm sure somebody that, you know, really digs a lot around might find some information, but um, it's it's kind of difficult. And even that ham operator is uh, not disclosing what frequency he was listening to. But NASA did confirm that he did actually receive that space probe. Then there's the distance. Remember that every time a signal is a double distance from you, the signal is four times weaker. So every time the distance doubles, the signal is four times weaker. That means that it drops real, real fast. So signals like from the Voyager spacecrafts that are you know, way beyond the orbit of Pluto now are extremely difficult and um, require a lot of computer processing, even just to dish out from the background noise, just to give an example. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very difficult task and you need very specialized equipment, very good equipment, a very quiet environment. And, uh, you know, that, that ham operator really specialized in um, listening to these signals. So it's kind of cool. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and thank you for watching.